All right, so from my experience with working in the government, there's been, uh, I would say I'm kind of surprised at the amount of open source that they do use, like things like, like uh, Python and Linux on their servers. But uh, there seems to be like this dependence on, um, I guess, reliability. And that reliability, uh, the notion seems to come from reliability is in big corporate uh, packages like Microsoft and their licensing. So what would you say to the government or any other organization with these uh, things in mind? You mean in terms of support and uh, yeah, standing support behind the product liability, that kind of thing? Would open, open source development be able to add so, like, support and reliability in the future? I think um, you know, you know, <laughs> reliability was kind of a big concern in my previous job. Uh, if, if something went down, we got to do a postmortem on the front page of the Wall Street Journal, um, <laughs> and then we actually had to go down to the Senate Banking Committee and explain ourselves. That was kind of the process. Um, so, you know, what does it take to have really reliable open source comp uh, software? Well, first you need high quality software. I don't think that's a challenge for open source software. I mean, there's a, a lot of great projects over there. There's a lot of studies being done showing that even purely community supported software can actually fix security bugs faster. There's a whole thing about multiple eyes looking at code and, and you know, some of, sometimes a little overstated. But I think the overall quality of the software is one piece. But then the other piece, um, uh, which I think you're hearing, is that the person who makes the decision to bring in that piece of software and has to say, this is reliable, I'm going to bet my career on it, they really want a company behind it, in my opinion. All right? And there may be a few brave souls who say, you know, I think community will be just fine, but you know, if, 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 if I get a phone call at 2 in the morning on Saturday and I have to have the exchange up at you know, 9.30 a.m. or really 8 on Monday, I, I, I want to know that there's somebody <laughs> in my time zone speaking my language with good tools is going to fix my problem. And uh, so I, I do think that it's important to have, you know, for, for open source to really grow up, we have to have in each important category the ability to demonstrate both great technology, reliable technology, stuff that runs, but also the ability to support it very strongly. And I'm sure there are other angles to your, soft, to your question, but those are the two that resonate with me most. Yeah, and I think the, the, the flip side of uh, reliability uh, is uh, risk management, mm -hmm. and, and that's very much the way that, uh, that, that we're looking at it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and this is why typically uh, you'll see uh, easier adoption of open source of smaller projects, because smaller projects typically have less risk. When you have a very large deployment, there's more risk, so it's more difficult for a large organization, sorry, a small organization, to prove that they can take it and they can provide uh, the, the support and service that you need. And for open source, uh, because a lot of those organizations tend to be smaller, uh, then yes, it will be more difficult to, to compete on very large projects because they may not be able to demonstrate how they can help mitigate the risk to a satisfactory level. Uh, but it doesn't prevent. Yeah. It, it, it's just a question of uh, how an organization uh, and the risk, you know, it, it goes both ways. It's both from a supplier perspective uh, as well as the, the consumer side, well, like in our case, the, the government. Uh, there are things that we can do ourselves also to, to mitigate risk. Uh, but often, uh, because, you know, it's been done that way a lot, we tend to try and push the risk on, on the vendor. Those, those are right. things that we're, we're trying to, to look at, yeah. how we can... Uh, address that too. I mean, you raise a lot of easier. interesting points that resonate with me. I mean, one is um, reliability, uh, complexity is the enemy of reliability. Right? And you know, one of the things that open source software has over uh, proprietary software many times is a cleaner, simpler design. Not always, but, but often. And part of the reason is that all the economic incentives with proprietary software are to keep loading up more features every release so that you can then sell an upgrade, right? 
you know, open source companies, we don't get any license fees. We're, we're not compensated for that. And if a user really wants it, and they're going to get engaged in the community or work with us, then a feature will come about. But I think the, the complexity issue is a real advantage of open source software. Um, the other side is that there's a tendency to, uh, for people who are not confident in their own technical skills to want to depend on the big brand name vendor. It's kind of human nature, right? They'll bail me out even if I'm not totally on my game, right? Um, and, you know, that, that's, that's a reality, I think, for some people. Not, not, not everyone, but there are some people who just say, you know, I mean, I used to work for IBM. You know, no one ever got fired for buying IBM was one of the things that people used to talk about, right? And, and so uh, the perception of greater risk, right, or the perception of less reliability is often unrelated to the actual facts on the ground. But the per perception is reality. Perception drives behavior. Uh, and, and to that, uh, on, on the perception, what I can add to, and that will be the exact same thing for any organization, government or non-government. Yes, I agree. Uh, that absolutely. Uh, depending on the skill set that you already have in your organization, uh, the, the yes. outcome of your analysis of risk will be totally, totally yeah. different. <laughs> yeah.